they was so huge to his family, uh, the people that played with him in the NHL, of course, the Winnipeg Jet organization, but over his coaching career with the Barry Colts of the Ontario Hockey League, he's helped mold players like Aaron Ekblad, Andrei Svechnikov, but Jets fans in particular, mm -hmm. very happy, happy that he helped out in the development of a certain kid from Ontario in Mark Scheifele. Yeah, yeah the selection of, of Mark Scheifele in 2011 was, you know, obviously a, a product of Real good scouting, number one, but but obviously, I mean, talking to Kevin Chevaldeoff in the last uh, few days, you know, he said, you know, you got the confirmation from Dale Howarchuk that you know this kid's not lying when he says he loves hockey and will do everything he can to make himself a better player. It, that's exactly it, and there's a special bond between the two. And here's a glimpse into that bond right now. Mark Scheifele, let's go back to him for a second. It's, it's he's kind of been like a surprise story to a lot of people around the National Hockey League. You know him very well. The people in Winnipeg have seen him all year. Have had the pleasure of watching him. Now that you've seen him as elevate his game a little bit more here in the postseason, is it a surprise to you, or is this exactly what you thought of him when he came when he when it was time for him to come to the National Hockey League? He Mark's ultra competitive, and. That's that's the trademark of special players. Like they, no matter what you, what game they're playing, you know, you can play them in chess or checkers, and they they want to win bad, right? And uh, he has that ultra competitiveness. Uh, he just wants to excel every time he goes on the ice. Whether you know, he just wants to get better all the time. And uh, I think uh, that 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 attitude's infectious to the rest of the group as well. Mark Scheifele joins us now from Waterloo, Ontario. And uh, Mark, obviously, when you Think of the name Dale Howard, Chuck. A lot of fans now, uh, especially fans of the, the current iteration of the Winnipeg Jets, know that he was your coach uh, in Barrie. But what do you remember about that first year in Barrie? It was also Dale's first year as a head coach. Just what was that kind of whole season like? Well, it all started actually. I was, uh, you know, I was actually going up to Huntsville. I was, uh, I was going to play for the Huntsville Otters at the time, um, which is a junior A, like tier two uh, team. Um, and there was a thing called the Cottage Cup. So I went up there and actually my rights just got traded to Barry, um, you know, about three weeks prior. Um, so he ended up, he ended up, him and the assistant GM actually came up to, to watch the, watch me play. And they talked to my mom and then on our way back, we actually stopped in at the Barry Molson Center and uh, had a meeting with them, uh, me and my mom, um, I think my brother was there as well. And, uh, you know, I was, I was pretty, I was pretty committed to going to the college route and going to Cornell. And, um, and then I talked to Dale and it was almost like, you know, something clicked and I was like, you know what, like, mom, I want to go play in Barry. Like, this is the guy I want to play for. You know, there's no one else that I'd rather play for than this guy. And, you know, that was from a, you know, talking to him for an hour. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then the, and then the, you know, then it really, really hit and, played uh you know played that first year with them learned so much and felt my game grow so much and you know he was you know he's he's a guy that you know I owe a lot of my a lot of, a lot of credit to because he's the one that you know helped me through so much and uh you know I was a very lucky lucky guy to have uh, have him as my coach how would you uh, describe him as a head coach it's interesting that you mentioned that conversation uh between the two of you and your, and your mom uh being about an hour and that all of a sudden you wanted you wanted to play for him um I know People like Mark Chipman, Pascal Vincent have said, you know, sometimes you don't necessarily remember the conversations, but you remember how he made you feel. Um, it sounds like it's the same for you, but how would you kind of describe uh, that impact that he had as a head coach? He was just so relatable. Um, you know, he went through it. He, he was someone that experienced the same things that, you know, us as players were experiencing um, when he was a younger kid. And, you know, obviously Hall of Famer, um, you know, amazing player, but, you know, he had so many experiences that he learned when he was growing up and playing hockey and, um, you know, the struggles he went through, the good times he went through. And, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is he just related to all of us players really well. Like, you know, I know from talking to a lot of buddies that I, that I played hockey with, um, you know, in Barry, you know, he was, he was every single guy's favorite coach. You know, there's no, there's no guy um, that I've talked to that wasn't like, this is the best coach I've ever had. You know, he was an unbelievable guy, but he just, he just related to all of us. He knew, he knew how to understand us all. Um, you know, he figured out a way to, to connect to us, you know, on not just a hockey level, but like a, you know, a personal level. And, you know, that's how he got the most out of us. That's how he was able to teach us. That's how he was able to, you know, make us better hockey players. And, you know, I, you know, he was, you know, such an amazing guy, such an amazing coach. And, um, you know, he just, you know, me, we, me and him connected, you know, right away. And, you know, there's, you know, a lot of my game is a lot of a lot of things that he he taught me growing up. 
I remember a few weeks ago, you, you said the lesson um, or one of the lessons he taught you was playing in the NHL is an education and you, you can learn a lot just, just from watching. How often do you think about that? Every time I watch a hockey game, so every night, um, you know, he, uh, you know, every, every night, if you're, even if you're watching just for the enjoyment, there's always something, there's some little thing that you can pick up. And, you know, if you only pick up one thing every game that you watch, you know, you, know, you watch 100 games in 100 days, you know, you're going to pick up a hundred things. So there's, there's just, you know, it was something that had hit hard right away with me. And that's, you know, you know, I, I didn't fall in love with the game of hockey until, you know, I, I played for Dale and, you know, then I really realized how, how much fun this game was, how, how enjoyable it is to go to the rink every day and learn to be a better hockey player, learn to um, learn a new skill, you know, work on a new drill, whatever it was, you know, he was the one that taught me the love for the game and, you know, loving playing games like two on two and three on three and, you know, being with your buddies every day. He taught me, you know, how enjoyable that is. And, you know, I take that, I take that with me, you know, every single day. Two experiences to kind of uh, stand out for me, the 2016 alumni game and his 2017 induction into the Winnipeg Jets Hall of Fame. So as someone that was kind of so close to him, what was it like for you to see him honored at those events? Yeah, it was, it was amazing. You know, I think, you know, you know, obviously he's a hall of famer, you know, that's just, that's just who he is. You know, that's his, that's his makeup. He's a, you know, he's a special, special athlete, but you know, the, the, the ways that I, the things that I think about is just the, the conversations that I've had with him. You know, it's not the, it's not the accolades that he has. It's the conversations that I've had with him and the, the lessons that I've learned from him and the, you know, the impact that he's had on my life, not just as a hockey player, but as, as a, as a, you know, just as a human being, you know, those are the things that I, that I, that I'll take with me until, you know, until, until I'm, until I die, you know, he was, he was a guy that, um, taught me so much, um, you know, but like, you know, when you talk about, when I talk about it as a coach, you know, I looked at him as more as a friend, you know, these last few, these last number of years, you know, we had that, we had that connection where, you know, if he screamed and yelled at me for, you know, 20 minutes straight, which happened, <laughs> which happened after one game, you know, I knew that he didn't hate me. I knew it wasn't, it wasn't a personal thing. I knew he, he did that because he cared about me and he wanted the best for me. And that was that, that was, you know, I think that's, that's a true friendship. Um, when you, when you don't worry, if you yell at someone, if you call someone out for, you know, the, for their flaws or what they did wrong. Um, you know, I didn't look at it as a personal attack. I looked at it as, you know, he's trying to make me better. He's trying to make me a better person, a better hockey player. And that's, that's the, uh, you know, the most loving thing that anyone can do for you. And, you know, I think that's, that's what I remember about him most. Finally, last one for you. Um, there's obviously incredible uh, parallels between the two of you, both being such significant draft picks in the history of, of the Winnipeg Jets, him obviously 1.0, you and 2.0, being a top line center in, uh, in the NHL. Do you ever think about that connection between the two of you and, and how kind of special is that to you? on top of the friendship that obviously you two had. Yeah, I, I think it's, I, I definitely do think about it a lot. He's a, you know, he's one of those guys that, you know, had such an impact on my life and my hockey career. And for him to have played in Winnipeg, for him to be, you know, such a legend in Winnipeg, um, you know, it, 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 it motivates me to, to be a better hockey player, to be, um, you know, to be at my best. And, and you know, it's almost like I want to, you know, I want all his hard work on me to not go unnoticed. You know, I want to have a legacy. I want to, I want to, you know, be looked at in the, in the hockey world the way he was looked at. And, you know, I think that, that just pushes me even more. You know, I know, I know he's, he's up there, you know, watching down on, on me and all of us. And, um, you know, I know that's only going to push me to, to, to make him proud and, and, you know, make him, you know, make him know that, you know, all his hard work wasn't worth nothing. And I'm you know going to keep working at my game to be the, the best player I, I, that I can be. And, you know, I know he's watching over, over, over me and, and he's going to be, he's going to be, you know, my guardian angel, you know, he's, he's been that ever since I met him, uh, you know, when I was, when I was 17 years old and, you know, he's going to be there for the rest of my career and the rest of my life. And, you know, I, I, I believe that, you know, wholeheartedly. Fantastic words uh, about a fantastic uh, human being. Mark, uh, thanks for taking time out to, to talk about Dale Howard, Chuck, and uh, the relationship you two have. Thank you.